Hi, I'm Danny Perry. I've been playing marimba for four years and I was section leader for three of them. So um, I'm going to explain to you all the different mallet instruments, the different mallet types, and then just basic technique that you'll need to know while going into high school. First instrument we have right here is a bell kit, also known as a glockenspiel. It produces that very bell tone like noise. Um, usually you will play this with acrylic mallets, which are seen right here but you can also use it playing copper mallets. These two different mallets produce two different noises, the acrylic producing a long, round, bell-like sound, and then the copper producing a shorter, much more dense sound that's a lot brighter. And those will give you two different sounds depending on what you are looking for with this instrument. Next over here, we have the xylophone. This looks very similar to what we have over there in marimba, but the difference between them is they produce two different sounds. If you look over here, you can see the pipes below it. They are much shorter. If you look at the bars, they are much more narrow. This instrument can be played with this type of mallet, a rubber one with no yarn on it, an acrylic mallet, or a mallet with yarn on it. They will all produce different noises, this being a very sharp sound, this being a more rounded sound, and this being the most rounded of a noise. And that's the xylophone. Next up we have the vibraphone. Short term is vibes. This, the difference between this and a marimba, you see it has much longer um, pipes below it. The mallet keys themselves are a lot wider, but if you look over here, so if you look on this side of the vibe, you see a pedal down here. Watch what happens when I press the pedal to the damper. It releases off of the vibe. This switches the tone from being very dense, very staccato to being legato. And as long as I hold this pedal down, that will stay reading because it is metal. Lastly, this is the marimba. This is my favorite instrument, it is the one I played throughout my time in high school. You can see that the pipes are very long, the bars are wooden, they're very thick, very similar to the xylophone, but it produces a much wider sound with the differentiation in the pipes as well as the bars. You can play these with three different types of mallets. First, you have your softest pair of mallets. This produces a very airy kind of noise. It will not be very staccato. It is just a very round noise. You can hear how that rings out. Then you ha next have your media mallets. This gives more of a denser noise. The sound will travel a lot farther with these, no with these mallets. It's a subtle sound, but it means a lot when you are playing music. And then next you have the hardest mallets. These will be the most staccato of the mallets. They are very similar to the copper mallets on the bell kit I showed you earlier. And you can hear that it's a much harsher tone. So, when you hold mallets, you want to hold them in the same way that is taught to you in sixth grade. You will have the mallet, you'll grip it about three-fourths the way up, you have your thumb here, grab the top. This creates a fulcrum. This is where the mallet can bounce. Next, you'll take your top three fingers. You will wrap them around the mallet loosely. This creates a space to where it can bounce very well, but still isn't crazy, and you have control over the mallet. When you are creating a stroke, which is an up-down, you want it all to be in your wrist, because when you are playing mallets, you are moving left and right. Your elbows are moving, so you don't want to have to be dependent on your elbow for creating that stroke. You need to be dependent on your wrist. In marching band, you start at parade rest. Your feet are going to be shoulder width apart. Your mallets are going to be in your hand in a proper grip. They're going to be behind your back. Then, when you're called to attention, it's band 10, hut. Your left foot comes in. The mallets come down about right below your hip. And you stand with your chest puffed out, your shoulders up, back, and your chin up. Then it's going to go bang, horns up, you step out, two, three, up, crack. So I'll do that again. Bang, horns up, out, two, three, four, crack. 
and that is going to give you a much clean look throughout the entire pit itself so everyone is coherent and everyone is together. In the music there will be breaks of a whole measure, you'll have rests in those areas in order to keep beat because it is very hard to maintain tempo all the way at the front of the band. Your lead marimba or vibe will be listening back to the snares and you will be following them. In order for the entire pit to maintain a consistent tempo, you, lead, you listen in to the lead marimba or the vibes and you pulse. This is a motion where your knees bend and it's just nice, easy. One, two, three, four. And you kind of get into a group. And this creates a nice uniform look throughout the entire pit and helps the pit maintain a specific tempo that matches the band. When you hit a mallet instrument, you create a motion that is a down up. You do, when you hit a mallet, you have to be able to bring that mallet up yourself. You can't just leave it there because it bounces. You need to go down up, down up, down up. This is going to all be in your wrist. This creates that noise to come out. If you have a staccato note, which is a note with a dot below it, you do something called a dead stroke. This is where you hit the note and you keep the mallet on to dampen it. You hit the note, you hold it down to dampen it. If you see a note that starts at a low G and then it has a little squiggle up to a high G, that is considered a glitz. So you'll start on the low G, you'll drag the mallet up all the way to the G, and then hit that top one. And that gives you that whole octave range in that noise. At the end of the song, you will hit your last note and the entire pit in sync, as well as the band, hit, up, down. That motion is you hit, you snap up, it is a very sharp movement. Your mallets, the head of the ball, will go about eye length. Snap up, and then you circle down. This is going clockwise. Your left hand will go in front of your body. Your right hand will stay to the side, down. And when you are going down, you go up, down. Still a very quick motion, fluid. In this part, when you go down, your left heel will snap into your right. So it looks like hit, up, down. And that is a very quick motion, but it is very fluid, which is what they like to see. A mallet instrument is very overwhelming. There is multiple keys. You have to look at the mallet itself. You have to look at your music. You have to look at the director. It is a very overwhelming instrument to learn. But if you put the time and practice into it, you will develop what is considered muscle memory, and you will be able to find a note easily without even looking. That's an E flat. That's a B flat. <laughs> Don't put that in. I was close. Anywho. You'll develop muscle memory and you will be able to find your notes easily without even looking. It is a lot of practice, a lot of time. Your freshman year, I recommend taking a marimba home via a truck. Usually that's what happened. My freshman year, um, our drumline instructor helped me bring my marimba home. And throughout that entire summer, I practiced every evening for about 30 minutes. This helped me develop my doubles with my wrists. It helped me become familiar with this instrument and it becomes an easier instrument once you understand the basic fundamentals of it. It's a lot, but it will be okay if you practice.